thank you so much for coming. Um, this is going to be a bit of more technical presentation, so I just want to know uh, how many of you are web developers here? Okay, so it's, it's a bit at the, at the bridge between designers and web development. Um, and also I'm going to present how we implement this kind of concept inside, the, inside XWiki, but if you have something similar in your product, I would be very curious to see how you did it. Uh, so for the people that don't know what icon themes are, uh, the most uh, similar concept are, are color themes. So user always wanted to have uh, different colors or their favorite colors. And uh, in the past, we did that with alternative style sheets. So we, if we wanted to provide for three colors, you have two different style sheets, one with red, blue, etc. Uh, but when the um, Bootstrap framework became more popular, and actually when preprocessor uh, had variables in CSS, uh, then the customizations of the themes become much more complex. So not just colors, but now you could change the, the typography, you could change the, the borders, uh, the margins, so, so a lot of other things besides colors. Uh, but one thing that was always missing was the ability to switch the, the, the icons. And for some, that might be something very uh, not important, so why, why would you do that? But, uh, but for, for designers or for users, or if you want to have your interface consistent and maybe uh, go through the, the new technologies, uh, changing that, uh, it's, it's important. So um, I'm going to tell you a bit about uh, the history of how and what themes we, we needed to apply to, to our platform. So, and I'm sure many of you that contribute to uh, open source project uh, hit this wall too. And the themes I'm going to compare are uh, Silk, Glyphicon, Font Awesome, and Material. And uh, I don't know how many of you used the, the Silk uh, icon. It was an image icon, so uh, in 2009 was used. So nobody from here? Used to. Uh -huh. Used to? <laughs> Still do? Ah, used to, used to, okay. So in that period of time, Silk was very popular. It, it, it had the free licenses and it had over 1,000 icons. So uh, for something that was free in that period, it, it was very, uh, very nice to have. Uh, the problem with Silk was that it was only 16 pixel by 16 pixel. And also in that period of time, uh, Internet Explorer 6 was, was popular and Internet Explorer 6 had problems with transparency. So people needed to use the, the GIF, GIF format. And uh, when we finally dropped Internet Explorer 6, uh, we needed to go all over the, our code base and, and replace that GIF with PNGs, uh, PNGs in order to have a proper transparency. And um, this might sound like an easy change, so just uh, the file name is the same, just change the format. But uh, if you need to go in multiple places, and also if you're extensible, and you have extensions that you cannot control, and you rely on outside the contributors to change them, th that might be a problem. Um, for the record, this is how an interface would look like with, with silk icons, and this is how it will look with uh, font awesome. Um, there was this switch from image sets to uh, font icons, and all the web started to be monochromium. So if before we, we had lots of colors on the icons, now uh, everything uh, uh, was looking like this. But one of the big advantages why people um, made, made, made this switch to, to icon sets were because in that period of time, we needed to provide responsive uh, interfaces. So uh, uh, 16 pixel by 16 pixels was not yet enough. And uh, we have the mobiles and lots of resolutions. So also in that period time frame, uh, Bootstrap became, started to become popular. And uh, when they uh, launched the, their two and three version, they provided by default the Glyphicon set. Uh, the Glyphicon set was not a free set, but they had some sort of agreement, and uh, it was uh, a nice alternative. One of the downsides of Glyphicon was that it only had 200 and icons. So if you were a platform and you wanted to switch to this new font technology uh, and to Bootstrap, you had like a, a downgrade of the icons you could use. And uh, if you have applications and those applications have dedicated icons, that was a big problem. Uh, so um, uh, we also uh, wanted to find an alternative in that uh, font awesome was one, uh, 700 was kind of, uh, of okay for us. One note uh, more about Glyphicon. Um, if you're, you're using the Bootstrap 3 version, 
and now you wanted to switch to Bootstrap 4, so Bootstrap 4 uh, launched like two months ago, you had another problem. Glyphicon was erased, they were not bundling anymore, they uh, tell you that you should look for alternatives. So you, were, you had three choices, you, either you don't upgrade, either you stick with Glyphicon but you pay the license or you find an alternative. So this uh, might be, you might, find, have, you might have found yourself in the situation of again needing to change the, the icon set you were using. Uh, again, a comparison of how Glyphicon and Photosome looks like. Uh, for users, they might say it looks kind of the same, <laughs> not, not many differences, so uh, a good alternative. So now we want from icon image set to switch to icon set. So we have a problem of how we are using these icons inside our, our, our code. So on image, you are using the image IMG tag. While if you want to use font sets, you, they say that you need to use a span or an, an, an italic tag, and you give the name of the icon in, in, in the CSS um, class name. So it was not that simple anymore, like switching from GIF to PNG. You needed to switch the, 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 whole, the whole tag, HTML tag. And um, this was not the only problem. The problem is that if you want in your interface to have icons, there are two types. There are inline icons and decoration, decorative icons. So for example, and all the font sets, they were promoting to use the inline version. So in the inline version, you said this is the image and then you have the label compared to the de decorative images where you have the label and the image is on top of it with CSS in the background image. And there are uh, multiple ways why you would want to have the decorative version. One of them is print. So if you want to have your page printed and you don't want those images to appear on your print, uh, they should be external. Also separation of concern. So the code is in one place, the, the styling is, uh, is in another. And another reason uh, are also screen readers. So when a screen reader p goes to over the, the syntax, and it finds that image, uh, it will try to read it. And it might be an image and it might not make for the sense, it would crowd the, the user with uh, uh, things that it doesn't need. Or if they were to use the, the fonts, uh, that font will, maybe is not supported by the screen reader and would, would read something like gibberish. And uh, so the, the flow of the user when he reads something might be disturbed. So we have different ways of entering sets and also, um, different ways of using them. So these were some, we, we need to find a solution for these problems. Another thing was that how the years passed by, um, the web standard community started to say that, okay, everybody is using icon sets, but uh, maybe they were more hackish and they were not meant to be used like this, and the proper way to use them are SVGs, so everybody should switch to SVGs. Why are we using uh, icon sets? Uh, and font sets. Um, another thing that in 2014, material design specifications become popular and everybody wanted them to use them. They were very well documented. Uh, they were also uh, consistent with, um, with Android. So if you had a, a mobile application or a web application, there was something that you might need to, to switch to. This is how material look, design looks compared to font awesome. One thing that you might notice is that material design has um, slimmer icons. Let's say that this was fixed by uh, font awesome 5 when they released. Uh, they provided t three different sets. So they have regular, solid, and uh, light, but um, the solid and light versions, you, you need to pay for them. So still one set. Um, yeah. And that's, how, and that's how material looks. Also, uh, the version uh, 4 of Fontasm had only uh, the icon font, while in material, if you wanted to use the, the set, you could have used individual images or image sprites or individual SVGs or SVG sprites or um, if we were to... Um, take the common denominator between sets and try to find a solution that it goes, at least for fonts, the same way. In material design, they are using actually um, uh, typographic ligature. So instead of providing the name of the class in the, um, in the name of the icon in, in the CSS class, they're using it inside the, the content. So again, another discrepancy in usage. Mom, so um, 
a lot of people uh, are kind of confused of, okay, if it's a new project, which version should we pick? Should we, we pick the, the font uh, technological version or the SVGs or the images? And uh, mostly it depends on what you want to do, but as a general consensus, SVGs are considered uh, more powerful and that's because um, the browser styling is more extended and also if you want to have animations. But in our case and what I'm describing here in, in the icon themes, usually you use small icons for actions like save or edit and those uh, icons are, are pretty basic. Uh, doing animations on them is, is pretty uh, overkill. So uh, in this particular example, if either if you use fonts or SVGs, they are kind of the same thing. Depends if you want to do advanced uh, stuff on top of them. Okay, so what we want to do is, no matter what icon sets we, we, we have, we want to be able to write it in a, in a particular, in a single way. And that's why in XWiki, for example, maybe it's a complicated solution, but that, that's what we had. It, we developed a service, and you call the service that is the icon service, and, and you tell them uh, the name of the icon. And no matter what is the, the active icon theme, it will translate uh, that in whatever syntax is needed. So uh, this solution applies if you know that you have a big project and uh, uh, it's going to stay for a long period of time and you might want to switch technologies. It's useful when you have uh, customization. So uh, one user will want to have, I don't know, colorful icons or other we will want to have a special technology. So this is where having this abstraction layer uh, came in handy because it will rapidly allow you to, to change the icon. And, and another thing, if you mark all your icons with using this system, uh, all the icons will be consistent everywhere. So I'm sure you've seen uh, open source project, like they have some icons from one set and another because they didn't have the, the time to, to, sw to switch everywhere. Here you're just using an abstract version and it's changing from, from, the, from the set. Okay, so this is how it looks like on the code base or definition of icon themes. So we have two sections. One is general setting where we, where, where we define the icon theme and then is the mapping. So for example, on Silk, you would tell them that, okay, this is an image set while compared to Font Awesome, that is a font set. And um, if you want to render it in HTML, you're going to use the, the image tag while on, um, on the font, you're going to use the span. And, um, this was important for us to provide multiple renders because wikis usually have their own syntax or support multiple syntax. One is the, their, their wiki syntax or markdown or, or whatever. And remember the example I gave you with um, the decorative icons and the inline icons? If you're having multiple renders, you can, you can say in CSS, I want this uh, icon to be rendered using background image. So uh, that was another use case that we needed to think about and solve. Okay, and the second part of an icon team is doing the mapping. So for the mappings, we have like 350 uh, names that should be defined by all the sets. So for example, uh, if you want a home icon, in Silk it should be house, or in Photosome it's home and in home, but in your code you just write home, and depending on the mapping, he will know uh, what icon or, uh, or uh, glyph to bring. And uh, if you're thinking of uh, uh, implementing or uh, using a similar solution, I would uh, ask you to reuse the work we did for, for, for these sets. And I also provide in the reference, there are other um, websites that do this mapping because the mapping can be kind of hard. So for example, uh, in Fontosome, you have just one icon that is useful for home, but in uh, Ecomoon, you have like three. Or like in I Ionicons, you have like four. So which one you pick? So here, uh, the designer or the person should be careful that all the icons should be consistent and, <laughs> and um, this decision uh, you need to take. And those were fortunate. Um, examples, but if you want, for example, to map the add icon in material design, this will be all the solutions because they have generic icons like pluses and pluses with, uh, with squares and etc. but they have also very uh, specific. So add a user or, or, or add an icon. So depending on your application and uh, how, what type of icon you need, you might need to, to extend the, the, the names of, of the icon theme you support. Okay, and um, what is nice uh, about this solution is that you don't necessarily need to 
to have support for a set that is uh, that is well established, you can create your own set. So there are some icon sets generator, uh, and you can go there and select like I want this social icon from this set and the social icon from the set, and they generate you an SVG sprite that you can use in your project. So uh, if you're a designer and you want to get crazy <laughs> with your uh, with your icons, you you could make your own set. But it's not just that; you can consider this also from a performance point of view. So instead of embed like 1,000 icon, since you're using just 20 icons, make your your set smaller and just just load the, those icons uh, without thinking about uh, the others that you don't need. Um, one thing to know is that since there are so many technologies when, when, when thinking about icon, icon themes try to find, as I said, the common denominator. So one feature needs to be supported by, by all the sets, and uh, uh, one, uh, one name for the icon needs to be present in all the sets. So some sets maybe they don't have an icon, you need to find a replacement or may maybe something uh, generic. But if you still want to do advanced icon stuff, uh, this you need to do them outside of icon themes. So examples of advanced uh, stuff you might want to, to do with icons. So for example, animations and rotations. For sure, the image set will not support that. So you still need to do them in the, in the, in the classic way, but at least you will know that all the rest, they will be easily changed. Or um, stacking, Fontasm had that ability to, to put multiple um, icons on top. So for example, like here, and then say that the camera is banned, uh, this will need to be separate. Or um, there are some version of icons that, um, uh, them being on the SVGs, and SVGs, you can uh, individually control different aspects of an icon. You can create your icons to be colorful. So when you map your set, you map everywhere to be colorful. And, and as I said, this is an alternative to the to the old image uh, sets where, that were very colorful. Some sets, for example, they have three different icons for um, for the same. So that is zoom, and depending on the resolution uh, uh, of the of your screen, it might be bigger or a different uh, a different style. Like here, so the details, you know, they won't be seen on the the mobile. So don't put the dots; put them only on big resolution. Uh, and another thing, some sets have support for uh, right to left or left to right reading, okay? So uh, example of list or, or even all the arrows. Uh, <laughs> left might be the, the, the other way in, in, that, um, in that other perspective. Okay, so uh, instead of just choosing one uh, or SVGs or font or images, if you have this abstraction layer or this mechanism of easily switching, you can support multiple and let the user decide what, what, what he wants. And for example, if you need to create um, an accessible uh, customization of your project for, for some people, uh, provide them with, their <coughs> with, with the fonts or, or the icons that they need. Uh, and these are the other examples that I give. Maybe you needed to change the license or you wanted to, to be more, more performant or, or um, and load just a finite number of icons or maybe you were using a very small set and then you wanted to expand to multiple because you, you, you grew. All these are reasons why uh, you should think about having this kind of system. And um, I know this applies for very large project and <laughs> in the open source, we, we kind, there are some uh, organizations that, that span over the years and need to extend and, um, and they are the, the particular users of, of this use case. Okay, <laughs> so thank you. Do you have any questions? Yes. I assume you have looked at a lot of icon sets. Yes. And what kind do you find most suitable for safe icon? Floppy disks or a micro SD or an image of an artist or something else? I don't know how to, say, how to answer that. Floppy disk, no. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, no, because we, we don't have, I don't, I'm not using floppy disk and this kind of icons. I don't know how to answer this particular question, so I know, I don't know. Um, there were some, um, 
like here, like the noun project where you, you could try to search for, for the floppy disk and see what sets they provide that icon and see if that set uh, applies to, to your particular needs. Something else? Who, who, who from here is using SVGs icons in their project? Okay, and uh, font sets? <coughs> okay, so the others are using images? Who is using, using images, no? Okay, sure, 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 yeah. So uh, do you plan to switch from one technology to another or uh, do, do you see reasons why you would want to this switch? So if you still plan to use images and you want to switch to another set, my recommendation would be to, to have a set that provides SVGs and maybe uh, export the, the, the image format for, from that SVG. If you want to paint. So uh, an open source alternative for doing vectorials and doing images, it's in scape. So yes, that, that would be a good to, to, to create them. Okay, so thank you for so much. <laughs>